3D Penguin Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, today's video is something a little bit different. It is the same footage that I used for my Penguin Earth Day series video, um, but it is full length, so there's no shortening of anything, there's no speeding up. I did crop off a little bits of nothing here and there, but it's not sped up, it's real time. So I hope you enjoy this video and maybe learn something from it, and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So as I mentioned, this video is in real time, so if you get bored with me, you can always skip ahead and continue on, or you can click on the link to see the quicker version if you really didn't need such an in-depth video. So I'm going to start by applying a bead of white acrylic near the cuticle, so I put it about a quarter inch down from the cuticle, and then I pressed it up, and now I'm sort of bringing it down in um, dabbing motion, and then I swipe it off or brush it off so that it creates a thicker area of white acrylic at the top and it's thinner towards the tip. And then with a very small bead of blue acrylic, I'm going to drop that right at the very tip of the nail, and then I'm going to brush it up. And as I'm brushing it up, I'm releasing some of the pressure on the brush so that it's not, it eventually leaves the nail tip and so it creates a nice feathered appearance. So I'm going to add another bead of white to the apex of the nail, so right in the center there. This is going to help blend the two colors together. So I'm going to brush that down and then pat it up. And then I like to use the belly of my brush to try to smooth out the entire thing so that it has a nice smooth shape so that when I apply my layer of clear, which I'm doing now, so the same thing, about a quarter of an inch down and then pressing it up and brushing it down. So anyways, if you have, if you make sure that the nail is smooth as you go throughout every step, it is a lot less filing in the end, which is always helpful. And when I first start to bring the bead down the nail, I like to use the belly of my brush and sort of pat it down so that it comes down progressively and creates a, a thicker layer of clear so it's not so thin. And that's also going to help you with your apex so that your apex doesn't get too thin because you definitely do want to have that strength, even though when you have 3D art, the strength isn't as important, the apex isn't as important. I don't, I hate to say that because it's, if you want a nice, strong, sturdy nail, you do have to have an apex that has thicker in the very center, it's gonna help you out. But with 3D art, it does add a thickness over the entire nail that makes it so that, I mean, that in itself adds strength. So then I'm gonna add another bead of acrylic, of clear acrylic to the tip, and I forgot to mention this as I was doing it, oh well. And then I was going to brush that up to create a nice smooth nail, or at least as smooth as possible. And then I'm going to smooth out the entire thing with the belly of my brush and lots of padding. Once that's set, so if you tap on it with your fingernail or you tap it on the table, it makes a nice clicking sound. I'm going to start to file it, and I am using a 180 grit file and I am gonna file along the top and along the sides. And then you can make sure to look at it from all different angles to make sure that there's no bumps or ridges that you may have missed as you're filing. Sometimes it's hard to tell. And so just check it over, make sure everything looks perfect. It's nice and round and smooth looking. And I'm sorry I'm off camera. And I do wanna say really quickly that the OPI edge files are my favorite files. They're really amazing. They last a long time and their shape makes it very easy for them to hold onto them and also to use. They're, they're really a good file. So yeah, just a quick shout out to those. And yeah, make sure you file the sides, side walls, and the tip. And then buff out the nail with a padded buffer. But This one is 240 40 grit by CND. It's their um, boomerang padded file. And again, I do really like this file as well. So then I'm going to get rid of all that dust and apply a layer of gel sealer. And the gel sealer is going to help you with 3D art in circum circum certain circumstances. And I will go more into that in a moment. So apply that layer of gel sealer, making sure there's no bubbles. And then throw that in your lamp for however long it takes your gel sealer to cure. And now I'm going to be switching to some uh, my 3D brush. And I'm going to start sculpting my father penguin. And as you can see, he's going to have a thicker shape at the top. And it's going to taper down towards the bottom. And yeah, you can watch that and I'm going to mention the difference between applying the gel sealer before you do the 3D art and not applying the gel sealer. If you apply the gel sealer, your acrylic is going to be a little bit, 
it's going to slip and slide on the nail a little more than otherwise, which in sometimes, in certain circumstances, that's a good thing, like this time, and sometimes that's a bad thing. If you want your 3D art to grasp the nail, if as you're using it, if that's going to help you, for instance, with the flower, when I do flowers, I place the bead of acrylic on, I let it turn matte, and then I press it out. When you press it out, it sort of grabs the nail and then stretches. If you put a layer of gel sealer underneath that and then you try to press it out, it's just going to slide. It's not going to, it isn't going to press out. It's just going to move. And you, in a flower, you don't want it to just move. You do want it to flatten and change shape. And for this time, as you can see, I use the tip of my brush to sort of cut in and trace around the side of his leg because that extra little bead I added there that has that extra thickness, that's his leg. And because of that gel sealer, I can remove sections of acrylic really easy just by wiping with my brush. And for doing an intricate design like a penguin like this, it's nice to have the ability to alter the shape and push and slide the acrylic without it leaving a residue which is basically what that gel sealer is, is keeping it from leaving a residue. And it makes it really easy because you can adjust your shape far longer than for more time than if you didn't have it on there. And also it's easier to adjust the shape. So if you realize that the structure is a little bit wrong or the shape is a little wrong or whatever you're noticing, you can continue to adjust it and it's a little bit easier. So now after that white has set, I'm going to start working on the black of my penguin. And so his head is black and then up and around his neck and down his back. So right now I'm doing his head and my I'm sculpting the penguin so it looks like his head is bent down and he's looking at, at his new egg, which is so that bottom of the shape I just sculpted with the black. It's almost like a, a um, I can't think of the word I'm thinking of. Anyways, like a comma. No, it's not. I don't know. Ignore me. Um, but the the rounder part, that's his head. And then it tapers up around his neck. So it gets nice and thin around his back like that. So as you can see, I can just sort of pull that acrylic into, sh into position, which makes it really nice and easy to do. And you get nice smooth lines. And then it thickens up just a little bit around his shoulder area and then down the side of his back. And so now I'm going to be working on that fin, or wing, it's not a fin, it's a wing that's down on the side. And his wing is sort of curved just a little bit around towards his tummy. So right now that's that area there is more like his back. So I'm going to take that down and then pull that just like so for his wing. And you really want to be careful when you're putting this black acrylic on top of the white not to get it anywhere you don't want to be black because it's going to stain the white acrylic and make it so anywhere that black touches, it's going to be black unless you file it off and pretty much start over, which you don't want to do because who wants to start over? So just do this in small sections and be very careful and work slowly and cautiously and just make sure that nothing happens. So his wing curves towards his head, so it, it brings in towards his head and then curves back down to the other side of his leg like that. So it's got like a very subtle boomerang shape. And I'm going to thicken up his head a little bit and just adjust my black. And when you're doing 3D art, continue to adjust and fix and alter things or any kind of art, not just 3D. If you're painting something, it's the same thing. Continue to make any small adjustments until you're absolutely, until you think it's perfect or as perfect as you need it to be, I suppose. So then I'm going to add his beak. So with a very small, fairly thin bead of acrylic, set that down right on the bottom of his head and then pull with your brush into that nice point. And then because his neck is half white, half black, I'm going to add another bead of white just to thicken it and add that dimension. So I'm going to pull that down and then blend it in with the body shape we created in the beginning. And 
And as you can see, a little bit of the black acrylic bled onto the white, onto his white body. So, like I said, you really want to make sure that your black is not touching anywhere where you don't want it to be black because it'll turn black, especially when you're doing things that are black and white like this. And if you wanted to make sure or try to prevent any bleeding as much as possible, you could have waited. I didn't wait. You could have waited for the black acrylic on your penguin to set 100% before you started adding more white, but I, generally speaking, don't wait. I just continue on and then fix things if something happens later. So that's what I did, and I got a little bit of a black stain on my white body. And so, as I said, I keep fixing and adjusting things, so I'm going to lengthen the shape of his beak and sort of give it a little bend on the end, like that. And then with some gray acrylic, I'm going to be placing that on the front of his leg. Or, yeah, not the front, but right where his toes would be. So I'm going to set that down. And it's a fairly small bead again. So I'm going to place that down and sort of pull it out into the, sh the long, wide shape where his two feet are sitting to create that little rest for the egg. And then with the side of my brush, I'm just going to press it into the gray to create indents for his individual toes. And then I'm going to go back to black because I realized that I forgot to give him a tail. And I'm going to, right behind that leg, I'm going to add a black triangle for his tail, just sticking out to the side. And then tuck that underneath the leg and blend it up towards his body. And then I'm going to go back to his feet and I'm going to press out those toes yet again and sort of push up from the bottom to create that scalloped shape so it does look like he has individual toes, not just a lumpy oval for feet. And then with a bead of white, and this is a very stiff bead, so after I grabbed it, I pressed or I flipped my brush over and pressed it against my towel so that I pulled the monomer out of the back of the brush so that it wasn't soupy and it wasn't going to slide out. It had a nice solid shape that it held. I'm going to form that into my egg that's resting on top of his feet. So now I'm switching to acrylic paint and the smallest brush I own and I'm going to start adding the details. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline his neck and normally I don't like to do too much outlining on my 3D because I think it it makes it look a little more cartoony and almost kind of diminishes the 3D. But since that neck is so, it's white on white like that, adding a little bit of a black line really does help. And I'm also going to separate his toes with small black lines. And then I'm going to do a little bit of the detail of the coloration on his head and neck. So this is an emperor penguin. And if you want to look at emperor penguins as a photo, um, you can Google it and you can certainly find some. Then you can see how their neck isn't, it doesn't just change from one color to the other. There's a couple different markings that they all have. And that's what I'm adding now. And then they also have some yellow. So I'm going to place some yellow up in that almost hammerhead shark shape. And then blend it down back along his neck. And also with yellow, because his egg in my circumstances very white and they're not i also blended some white or some yellow over the top but i did that later so with white again i'm going to add his eye and then a stripe on his beak and covering the stripe on his beak i'm going to then add some orange and the reason i put the white down first is because if you were to paint orange directly on top of the black it would never show up it needs something bright underneath it to make sure that the color shows up and gives a nice contrast so it's visible so then, as I mentioned, I'm going to be blending over some diluted yellow on top of the egg. Because their eggs aren't solid white, they're more of a creamy color. And then with some white paint, I'm going to be doing my highlights on my penguin's body. And so I'm going to start by highlighting that leg. And I'm not going to just paint over the entire penguin with white. I'm going to do it selectively so he has... This is just going to make him look more dimensional. And the more dimensional he looks, the cooler he looks. So it doesn't have to be solid either. It can be 
you can see some of the paint strokes that you're doing when you're highlighting it with white like this because his feathers aren't totally smooth. They do have a texture and they're, they don't lay flat against his body. They have, you know, shape to them. So the brush strokes will make it look like that anyway. And also highlight his neck. So I highlighted his leg, his tummy, and his neck. And then I'm going to paint over him with a layer of matte top coat to protect all of that acrylic paint. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial may have helped you. Once again, if you want to see the quicker version, I'll put a link to that in the description box. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!